So uh, my name is Ben Kurtovic. I edit at the Earwig. Uh, this talk, I totally wasn't even preparing to do this. So this is in true lightning talk fashion, no slides, totally off the cuff. Um, does anyone know how I can hide that, this thing up here? OK, I'll just drag it away. Cool. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is show you guys something that I worked on like 10, 15 years ago. Gosh, it's been a long time. Uh, but we have some recent improvements to it. Uh, so this is Earwig's copy bio detector. That's my name. Thank you. Uh, just, just like show of hands, who has seen this before or, or used it? Oh gosh, that's like everybody. Oh no, okay, but not everyone. So I'll definitely explain what this is about. Uh, so copy bios, copyright violations, uh, if you're not familiar with the term, you can think of it as you know plagiarism. Uh, this is a tool that people use in article patrolling and you know uh, article review processes like you know DYK. Did you know to search for potential um, uh, you know plagiarism? Someone copied some text in an article from a source, and then the purpose of the tool is to show you uh, you know where that's been copied from. So I can do a very quick demo, and let's hope this works. Um, I have uh, that's not right. I have this test user um, where I have some little test cases. So here's an example page. Um, you might recognize this as a biography of Barack Obama. Fortunately, this is in the public domain, so I'm not committing any violations by having this here. But I can show you what this would look like if I were to throw this through, through the tool. So I can just copy this page title, plug it in here, and then I click Submit. And then this returns pretty quickly, all right, because I already ran this earlier, so it's nice and cached. And what you see is it shows me that there's a potential suspected violation. Here's a list of sources that it checked. And then what it will do is it will highlight uh, text in the article. And then on the right side, it will show me a dump of the raw text from the source, and it will highlight you know, the text that matches. So I can see that you know, this is a, a string of words that, that is found in both, um, both the article and the suspected source. And the basic idea of how this works is we just take the article text, we split up into a bunch of sentences. It's about eight sentences usually if the article is long enough. We throw those sentences into Google, and Google comes back and tells us, you know, here's the web pages on the internet that have these sentences in them. And then we look at all of those web pages and we just do this comparison, the uh, the sources with the most text that is potentially, you know, copied or is shared uh, get shown here. Now um, we've had a recent issue with this tool which is that, like I said, we use we rely on Google for this service. Um, we have an API key, so what that means is um, Google gives us access to their kind of programming interface that lets us run direct searches. We don't use google.com like the normal interface people do. There's a, a special interface for programs. And uh, the Wikimedia Foundation actually pays um, for that access. Google's not uh, freely giving that out to everyone. And there's a limit we can only run about 10,000 searches a day. 10,000 searches is normally enough if you think about you know, random people using this, but this tool has gotten a lot more popular over time and it's reached a point where that's not sufficient capacity to handle our request load. And also with the rise of AI, we're seeing an increasing number of just random web crawlers, you know, just finding random web pages and typing in random junk. So they'll run the copy bio tool against, you know, random URLs and they'll just kind of use up our quota and it'll be kind of a malicious use because it's not benefiting anyone when they do that. So we had to add something here to uh, deal with this problem. And it's been a problem for a few months and I have a uh, huge thanks to the user Claude. Shout out to Claude. He says hi. Awesome. This is Claude, a uh, great guy uh, from the Philippines. And he has finally uh, done the work to finish implementing uh, support for uh, logging into the tool. So before you didn't have to log in, now you actually have to log in if you want to do a search. So I showed you this, I didn't have to log in how this works, it's because I already ran it earlier and it's cached. But if I wanna run a search against a page I haven't cached, uh, I can do that and it'll say, okay, you gotta log in. I click log in, do this live. Uh, How did I get that right? I didn't. Let's try again. If this doesn't work, then we'll just pretend it worked. <laughs> it worked. All right, cool. So yeah, then it just uh, brings you to um, Meta. You can give the tool permission to 
make requests on your behalf. It's not going to actually use your account to do anything. We're just tracking that this is coming from a real human. You click allow, and then this will run. This takes a few seconds sometimes, but eventually we'll come back. And this was an example that didn't really have too much copied. So you can see here, um, again, biography of Obama, but in this case, it was just a few sentences. And you can see how it highlights you know, the few sentences that are copied. Uh, so huge shout out to Claude for this. Really appreciate it. I don't always have a ton of free time to work on this tool. So I'm really thankful that the community has other members who can step in and help with features like this when necessary. Uh, so yeah, any questions? You're out of time. All right, that's no good. That's <laughs> That's not what's next. Like what, what are you going to have on that? Oh, uh, so big feature uh, been around for, uh, been in development for a while is uh, if there's multiple potential sources, we can show you all of those sources at once. So highlighting different colors for each source. Um, anyways.